Hello and welcome back. Today we continue our discussion on the European air quality policy. We focus on implementation. What are the main challenges in the implementation of this policy? And is the policy effective? I want to welcome our local experts which you already met in the previous video. Welcome to Katina Bonjeva, attorney at law of Ikimiev and Partners and representative of the Association for European Integration and Human Rights in Plovdiv, Bulgaria. Ingrid Winter from the Air Quality Control Office of the Regional Government of Steiermark in Graz, Austria. Giorgio Adwino from the Emissions and Environmental Risk Office of the Region of Piemonte in Torino, Italy. And Cor Lames, Mayor of the Municipality of Schiedam from the Netherlands. Let's start. So what is in your view now the main challenge of the um, uh, air quality policy um, uh, uh, which has been transposed in, uh, in Austria? The main challenge for us in yes. Steiermark is uh, that we have a very unfavorable uh, location with respect to the meteorological conditions. We are located in the southeast of Austria and also southeast of the Alps. So the, we have very low wind speeds and uh, a very high occurrence of, uh, of atmospheric inversions. And this very negatively influences our air quality because there's not enough exchange of the air masses. Uh, and therefore we have to adopt uh, even more measures and invest even more money in order to effectively improve air quality than other regions might have. So this is one of the most challenging views to be even better and do even more than others. Uh, furthermore, there is, I think, that similar to other regions as well or other countries, that there is, of course, uh, different, there are different interests from the different sides. That means that we have to find a consensus uh, between the interests of, let's say, air quality and economy and uh, agriculture. We have some point of difference from, as, as, as many people can know, regional level in Italy are very different between one and the other. Uh, so, Regione Piemonte is one of the region of the Po Valley. This means that for air quality policy, we are in a, in a difficult position because we are in a meteo hydrographical situation in which we have low diffusion of emission. This means that normally we have high level of pollutant because the most part of industry are concentrated in the Po Valley. The most part of transport are concentrated in the Po Valley. We have all around mountain of uh, average of 4,000 meters. This means that we are exactly like in the bottom of one basin. Compare with uh, our friends in French that are 200 kilometers of distance. They don't have any mountain between the ocean and the uh, Région de Lyon, for instance. And uh, we, have, we are open in the Balkan area but normally the winds arrive from the, from the west sides. So we, this is one of the region of the reasons, sorry, uh, why we have uh, a high level of pollution measure. On the other hand, we have more resources than in the south, and this means that we can take measure uh, a little bit more ambitious, for example. Uh, because industry produces a lot, uh, so it means that they have uh, more resources for reduces of emissions. Schiedam is uh, oriented in the in the Rotterdam Rijnmond area. Uh, the Europol Potlek zone this is one of the most important mm -hmm. chemical industries of Europe. Um, and we have a lot of problems with pollution from that Potlek airport uh, area because uh, we are uh, in the northeast of that, uh, of that, uh, that uh, zone. And we have a lot of winds coming from southwest, so there is a real problem. Uh, it's polluting from the chemical industry, but it's also polluting from heavy uh, vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of traffic going on to that uh, to that zone. 
uh, this is the second problem. We have uh, quite a lot of residential areas next to the main harbor of Schiedam and Rotterdam. It's the only place in the Rotterdam uh, Rijnmond area where residential areas are located so close to the industry. Mm -hmm. And that means that there must be a good balance between living and uh, economic uh, development. But um, well, you were involved in this court case on um, uh, the air quality in, in your municipality, the municipality of Plovdiv. Um, could you explain us what the main reasons are um, uh, for making this case? Well, first of all, we are parents. And in uh, the concentration of the noxious elements uh, are higher uh, at the level of where small children breed. Uh, then we are also human rights lawyers and uh, it's an interesting aspect that we are also trying to bring to life the concept of the member states' re responsibility for breach uh, of the European law in Bulgaria. We have several cases on that matter. So uh, when we understood that Plovdiv is the most polluted city what uh, concerns uh, uh, PM10 in whole Europe, we decided that it's our duty to initiate a court action. Uh, so in September 2011, we filed a class action in front of the Plodif Regional Court, uh, which is the competent court according to the law. Uh, the defendants in that proceedings uh, are uh, the Plodif municipality, of course, and uh, a local inspectorate. Uh, the plaintiffs, the plaintiffs beside my family, uh, are one NGO, which I'm representative to it, and two more public figures in Plovdiv. But after the case was brought uh, in front of the court, around uh, 140 people joined the proceedings uh, supporting the action against the defendants. Uh, the claim uh, doesn't have a uh, pecuniary interest, interest. we uh, only want uh, that the European standards uh, be reached uh, by the competent uh, authorities. After is the, interest, uh, the interesting part is that uh, after two hearings in front of the Plodiv Regional Court, the court uh, decided, uh, uh, all the judges of the court decided they would be biased uh, since they are living in Plodiv and they are part of the people in protection which that action was brought. And then the case was referred to another court, uh, uh, and so last year we had the judgment saying that the defendants could not be held responsible in Plovdiv uh, because uh, the city has a very unfavorable geographic disposition with fox and less wind, and uh, that's why, despite the fact that the, pol the polluting is still above the margin of tolerance, whatever measures the municipality or inspectorate take, they will not have effect according to the courts. And now we are appealing that judgment in front of the second court instance. What are to you the main goals of the implementation of the clean air, uh, air policy? I can imagine that within your region you have specific priorities um, um, in the implementation process. As basically the main goals are to protect human, animal and plant health, to protect ecosystems, mm -hmm. uh, to protect uh, cultural goods, to avoid nuisances to people. Uh, we also have, of course, the objective to preserve and also further improve air quality, even the uh, no uh, exceedances of emission limits at the moment. And besides that, we have, uh, in some cases, uh, even more severe limit values because uh, we want to make sure that we meet the European limit values. The main goal of the local ambition is uh, public health, public mm -hmm. health, public health. Uh, we are living so close to the industries that uh, it's important that people can have a good uh, a living and a good living condition. Um, there are two problems in that. Uh, firstly, a lot of our inhabitants are working in the chemical mm -hmm. industry. So they are talking about their da daily living, their daily earning. Uh, and the problem of that, uh, related to that, is that perception of clean air and clean air policy is not as it should be. Uh, a lot of people don't bother because, well, they are acquainted with that kind of industry, they are acquainted with the kind of uh, uh, air pollution, so their, their level is not as uh, high as it should be. What we are trying to do as local uh, municipalities to, uh, 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 to create a, a, a good balance between uh, uh, health, public health, and that perception about um, it's not only my bread, but it's also my health. 
the moment um, 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 you have to implement a air quality plan, plan, there are all kind of, let's say, ingredients, also kind of elements. What are now the typical elements in the municipality of Schiedam of um, that kind of, let's say, plans? Now, typical element is uh, a distinction between local and regional uh, plans. Um, uh, 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 an example of a local uh, policy is providing electricity for docked vessels. That's a real problem because vessels who use their own engines, their own mm -hmm. diesel engines, produce a lot of noise and a lot of air pollution. And we facilitate uh, duct, uh, uh, electricity, electricity on, on wall for docked vessels. An example of regional policy is public transport. We are participating in the metropolitan area of Rotterdam Rijnland, but the region itself is responsible for public transport. So we have several responsibilities. Not everywhere, because it's enforced, so every single are measures. Uh, the police are enforced by the measures, so only the measures could write a, an executive ordinance to stop the cars. And this is an administrative region for do this, but uh, in some region, in some city, they stop uh, all the day, uh, all the cars. In some other regions, they stop only uh, diesel car, and it's not so bad. In some other, all, uh, only Euro 2, Euro 3 maximum, and sometimes only for uh, uh, three or four hours in the in the morning. So, uh, what is difficult? It's a common implementation in large area. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Uh, I suppose that regional level don't have sufficient robust uh, administrative force to put in force this. Uh, exactly like we don't we can't put in force. Uh, uh, speed limitation on the on the road. That it's an, that could be another hypothetical measure for reduce uh, emission, especially during the summer for ozone. Uh, but only the national level can put in force, and they say that they have the sufficient uh, policemen for control, so they don't do it. Uh, or or sometimes they reply that is not feasible one limitation in one region and not in the other so what i what i think is that in some cases implementation of policy is limited by the negotiation between administrative levels Mm -hmm. On the question you know, whether I'm sure they have a plan, yes, they do have plenty of plans and programs because they are part of the uh, documents presented to the case. Uh, the problem is that these plans and programs, they only stay on paper. Um, before the, the case was brought, there are several reports of four groups that were designated by the municipality and the inspectorate. Uh, as well as actualization of the uh, plans and the programs. And in that reports and programs, they're expressing concern about the huge problem with the air pollution in Plovdiv and confessing that the measures plan are not taken or are inadequate. Uh, for, uh, for example, although the decision that the public transport should be in conformity with EU3 standards was taken in 2010, the experts heard by the court said that uh, by 2015, 42 out of uh, 56 vehicles of public transport are not in conformity with EU standards. Uh, the same experts said that the organization of traffic is problematic to a level of inadequacy. Un and uh, uh, we have also a big river dividing the city into two, and uh, the existing state of the bridges uh, causes traffic and uh, long stay of vehicles with engines on. And uh, it's uh, another aspect that the highway is on the one, one side of the river, and on the other side is a major important custom office in Bulgaria, which causes additional transport problems because most of the trucks coming to the custom office through the highway uh, are not even uh, from Plovdiv. Uh, the, also, the plans and the programs that are existing uh, uh, and their actualization, uh, uh, the municipality in, in them itself 
also express critics to the cleaning of the streets and the way it's done and other public areas by brooms. Uh, the, the court uh, expert provided uh, information in front of the court that it is an ongoing practice up till now. And also uh, there is a, a report, and I believe it, it was from 2008, saying that, uh, the municipality report, saying that uh, even the machine washing is not effective because of the bad drainage. And thus the dirty water stays on the street after evaporation and the, the dust is still on the road. Is the policy, according to you, effective? I think it's effective, but has to, that has to do with the perception of the Rhineland area. Uh, it was a polluting area since the years of 60s. And after that, the, 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 one of the most important environmental agencies in Europe started, the DCMR, the Regional Environmental Protection Agency of Rhineland. And they are very ahead in enforcing uh, legislation, enforcing... Uh, uh, permits, etc. Uh, the second part uh, by uh, by which I think it's it's very successful is that there is a large cooperation in the regions. Cities work together. Cities work together with the regional levels, and we have the same uh, approach. When when you speak to the mayor of uh, Vlaardingen, he has the same opinion as the mayor of Capelle of the mayor of Rotterdam, or uh, like mine uh, opinion. So we are very cooperating, and we are not struggling. Cooperating. Well, obviously, no. It, 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 it's, it's strange for me because I wrote some of that, but uh, in my case, no, because it's not sufficient ambitions. So, if you take example the new uh, MCB or the new uh, in the EAD in, in the Industrial Emission Directive or uh, or the new uh, decision for. Uh, uh, eco design in uh, stores and so uh, it's inapplicable. So we have a lot of problem in the application of this policy, but not because the limit written in the policy are too ambitious, but because on the other hand we normally push industry or uh, uh, production uh, farm that produce this uh, stoves or this apparatus to be more ambitious of what is the result of the negotiation. One example would be eco-design from, uh, from uh, not gas, bo gas boiler not, but from biomass boiler. Uh, the result of limit are the double, so 160 microgram for gigawatt if I remember well, and we have enforced 80 since uh, 1992. So what happens now is that every uh, singular farm says, oh, no, but uh, uh, you have to increase your limit because the, in Europe they admit uh, 160. And normally say, yes, in Europe, in Lyon, in France, in Paris, probably they have no problem, but we are in the bottom of the, of the best in so this means that to invent and to have a policy for air quality in, in this particular part of Europe is very, very complicated. Yes, it is effective because we could throughout the years continuously improve air quality. Uh, we still do not meet all the limit values for PM10 mostly due mm -hmm. to our uh, adverse climatological conditions with low wind speeds and, and, and uh, atmospheric inversions. Uh, we also have the same problems as all larger cities uh, with NO2 due to traffic. And uh, so we still have to work on it, but uh, what we did is effective in some case, uh, in most cases. Uh, what is also one problem is of course the balance between the interests between different parties for instance uh, traffic and agriculture and uh, this also might lower down the effectiveness of the air yeah, quality policy. Public is not effective at all 
Uh, the latest monitoring reports prove that, even with the sampling points removed from the center of the city, uh, for example, there is no explanation why the trolley transport system is not maintained. Plovdiv uh, was uh, one of the very few towns in Bulgaria having a trolley infrastructure, and it's not maintained, and it's falling apart, and because of a tragic tragic accident, uh, uh, accident uh, two years ago, uh, the municipality is removing the infrastructure right now in instead of investing in it and restoring it.